plane on this diagonal. And now g5 upon sacrifice by Magnus. And here we have to current position. The last move was rook to e1. Here was the threat that black takes this pawn on g5 because if the knight was to take back, then the rook could be taken on g1 by the queen. So this is why Gukesh moved the rook out of the way. And I'm tr still trying to make sense of the position. There's still a lot of awkwardly placed pieces. This bishop on d1, the queen is not in the game, but this bishop on g8 is also not in the game. It is a very difficult position to evaluate. Uh, white is up a pawn, so this is good, but on the other hand the knights are well placed here, also it's a double pawn. I'm really not sure what to make of it. I look at the engine and it says white is a little better, but honestly it doesn't mean much in this position. Who would you prefer here, Peter? What do you think? Well, it's uh, it's a very difficult position to to evaluate. I do understand that I first liked Magnus's position. Yeah, that he was the one who sacrificed the pawn with g5, so clearly had some intentions. On the other hand, I also see that White has a clear plan of eventually going queen d3 and queen e3, just activating that queen, offering a queen trade. We are pawn up. We don't uh, really afraid. Uh, uh, getting the queen straight. On the other hand, I do recall we have seen this pre-game analysis there by Magnus, Levon and, and Fabi, and we did uh, speak about this, that that was some banker gambit kind of strategy. Yeah? So uh, this kind of sacrifice and then going h6, g takes h6 and getting some play is uh, maybe in Magnus's mind, but I don't see it really uh, working so nicely, so I, I don't believe that h6 is probably the best move here. I'm liking the extra pawn for white currently. Uh, Magnus has to prove his compensation. Also notice how the pawns on c3, g3 take away some key squares from that black knight on e6, not really allowing it to jump into white's camp. Uh, Magnus has to think about how to actually try to get the initiative that he sacrificed the pawn for. I would love to improve that bishop on g8, the one idea that comes to mind. And Magnus does it. He plays the move bishop f7, also eyeing the square h5. Maybe at some point the rook can line up on the g file, uh, Peter, putting pressure on that g5 pawn's pawn ideas, like bishop h5, which I think has been stopped by this last move. Uh, Gukesh playing bishop to b3, saying now when you move that bishop to either g6 or h5, he's going to grab that knight on e6, destroying black's pawn structure. Yes, at least uh, that's a serious possibility. On the other hand, it gives up the light squares and eventually if we know already that black can castle, black can simply castle like this, then if we, we get this transformation of structure, let me just uh, put a few moves just so that we better understand what we are talking about. Yeah, the structure is terrible. White has this e5 square. On the other hand, if black castles, then this combination of black's uh, monster bishop on h5, the light squared bishop and the rook, Causing some real trouble against White's coordination. Yeah, so such a complex stuff.
he might have to give up the piece. Yeah, the, you, you can't because the the c pawn is about to queen. Yeah, so Black's bishop is overloaded. And the big question is, what do you do? Do you go rook to b5, tying down your rook to defend that knight? Or do you go knight to d1, again tying down your rook to that knight? Uh, Magnus, you can see the hesitation in him. He knows it's no pleasant choices. And wow, rook c2 played after knight d1. Because the bishop is overloaded, you can't take on c2 because of c8 queen. And not knight on d1 has nowhere to go. You have to fall back, and I think... I it's on the board, bishop c8, because c8 was the big threat on the board. But how do you finish this off? Peter, there has to be... And he obstructs. <laughs> he comes in the way of that rook and the knight. Magnus Carlsen is about to lose that piece on d1. But still, the knight on d3 is also hanging. Yeah, but he can follow it up with knight fc2, e5, get the stability and everything is protected. Uh, basically, we might be talking about the scenario where nothing can go wrong because everything is super protected and the pawn on c7 is a monster. And Magnus trying to bring the king into play and we see the rook now coming to attack because the knight on d1 is trapped. That knight on d3 takes away key squares. Magnus Carlsen, look at him. He looks like he's close to resignation, but he's throwing in the punches. E4 coming in. This guy never gives up. <laughs> no, of course never. Yeah, you have to fight and it's a time scramble if you can somehow create some even ghost threats, yeah, something that is objectively losing, but you confuse the opponent, it's fine. Gukash takes that pawn. And Look knight at b2. This, Peter. The knight is out. How does Magnus find find these ideas? It's unbelievable. Wow. Look at front check. And the point is that the white knight can't take the black knight because the knight on e5 is hanging. In seconds, Magnus finds a way to survive hanging. It's a tightrope he's walking on, but he is walking on it. Knight check. The king will step over, attacking that knight on c6. He needs to stay connected to the white knight. Yes, he needs to king d6. And where does it end? Look f6 check, king c7. White collects the knight. Yeah, knight takes b2. Is there some trick? Do does not seem like. It seems like Gukesh has just managed to survive all this time. Scramble, he's now also very well uh, up on the clock. Yes, yeah, 34 seconds stability. If there is some more crazy scenario, you can spend some time to find the solution. And Magnus there, he's feeling shifty in his chair. He's down a piece. If he can somehow trade or grab that G3 pawn, it's still a draw. But it's far away because White's king is so close to defending that pawn on G3. Uh, Magnus trying to think of ways to trick his opponent right now. He first puts pressure on that knight to c6. Yeah, knight b4 looks like a tempting option. Yeah, just to go back, get stability, get the other knight to d3, king to f2. Yeah, Magnus goes to h5. Knight b2 to d3 would be kind of very tempting just to coordinate the pieces. Knight c4, ambitious move. Going after the black king. Yeah, look f7 check. And wow, these youngsters are fearless. <laughs> he wants to give checkmate even in this position. The yes. knight on b4, c4, taking away all the squares from black's king. So not only up a piece, but going for a mating attack here. Gukesh putting pressure on the bishop on b7. Magnus goes all the way far away from those white threatening knights. And uh, maybe the knight can start jumping in. Knight a6 check. You have to go to a8 with your king. Yes, but it's not checkmate yet. So maybe you just protect that pawn first because white, uh, black is not, not running away. What? Yeah, and Magnus resigned. Wow. Checkmate. Unreal. And we did see a checkmate in the end with the knight coming back. Rook to a7 was the big threat. Knight to c7 is the other big threat. Gokesh gets it done. He wins against the world number one in freestyle chess. What what a game that was, just amazing. Yeah, what a turnaround. What a turnaround. And, and yeah, Magnus will be very upset with himself. From a dream scenario, it turned into a complete nightmare scenario. These are the things, uh, these are the losses.